overhead camera. So I will spotlight my overhead and my main one so you guys can kind of see it a little easier. Add spotlight. Okay, does everybody have a side by side? See my uh, cutting area? So for the chicken salad, we're gonna start with um, about a pound and a half of boneless, skinless chicken breast and put it in a kind of medium or large saucepan. I find that the size of chicken varies widely. So my package, there's only two in here and it's a pound and a half. Um, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four pieces to actually get that pound and a half. So um, just whatever I, and it doesn't have to be super exact, but about a pound and a half is good for this recipe. So we're just gonna put those into a saucepan. And, I, and yes, the one of the biggest questions I get is, is my kitchen really actually tiny? It is. Um, this is pretty much my whole kitchen, like right here. So um, it's nice and cozy. Um, we're going to cover this by just like an inch or two with cold water. I just want to make sure that while, while it's boiling and then simmering, the water doesn't dip down below the top of the chicken. Otherwise, you'll have to like flip it around to get it to actually finish cooking. Okay. Yeah, and I know raw chicken is not very appealing to look at, but it'll be delicious later. Um, we're going to add a dried bay leaf. I... I never thought bay leaves had like a ton, ton of flavor, but I've been like, if you can find dried ones that are a little more green, um, this one is Morton and Bassett. I got this at like the regular, like stop and shop, regular grocery store. They actually do have a lot more um, fragrance and I find that they add a nice flavor. My husband uses them and um, he's Italian and he uses them when he makes pasta sauce. He like kind of cooks it in the oil and stuff and adds a nice flavor. So one dried bay leaf, we're going to add a teaspoon of either seasoned salt, whatever you have, like Mrs. Oh, I guess Mrs. Dash is a salt free. You would just add a little salt also. Um, seasoned salt or adobo seasoning. I have adobo. Some, some adobo has salt in it already and some doesn't. Um, so just a teaspoon of it in there. And that's just to kind of flavor the cooking liquid. Add that and we're going to put it over high heat and bring it to a boil and then once it starts to boil we'll reduce it to simmer until it's cooked through all right so while that is cooking we're going to preheat the oven for the pita chips um, you don't have to make if you're making these recipes another time obviously you don't have to make them all at the same time it's just kind of fun things that can be made in advance and they pack up well um, for if you're going on a picnic or the beach or anywhere like that. Um, so for the pita chips, 400 degrees on your oven. Um, you can do two, like you could double this recipe if you wanted to use a whole pack of pita bread because usually, um, usually pita has four of the large pockets in one, but um, you can fit two on one cooking sheet. Um, this is a half sheet pan. So you can fit two pitas worth on one. And I find that if you put two trays in at the same time, sometimes the ones higher up, they kind of like curl up and they might get a little extra crispy. So I just like doing one and then I'll throw another set on and, and bake them again. They don't take too long to cook up. So it's not terribly inconvenient. Um, so pita chips are super easy to make. I bought whole wheat pitas because they're on sale. I have not tried this with whole wheat pitas before. So we're gonna see. Um, the important thing is that they have pockets so that you can separate them um, into like thinner pieces for the chips. So I'm just gonna cut these in half. I have two of the pitas here. I'm gonna cut them in half, stack them. And you can cut them into in half again, or you can cut them into thirds, but I'm gonna do eight pieces. And then this one is actually really fun if you're making it with kids, because um, they can sit there and peel the layers apart. So 
um, after we make our spice mixture, we'll peel so the pockets open and all these are thinner. So each pita will give you quite a few chips. So I'm just gonna set that aside while we mix the spice blend. And you can absolutely customize this for different flavors. If you wanted to add, you could even do like sweet pita chips. You could um, add like a little cinnamon in there. Not for this probably, but um, you could add different dried herbs whatever you like. I think these flavors just go kind of nicely with a traditional style hummus. Um, so we're gonna add about, we're gonna add three tablespoons of olive oil into the bottom of a large bowl. And if I talk too fast, I get a little Gilmore Girls-y sometime, just let me know and I'll, I'll slow down. Um, so we've got three tablespoons of olive oil. I've, the, this recipe I've done for some kids' classes and it gets kids excited about eating and trying new vegetables, which is really awesome. I figure anytime you can encourage that is a lot of fun. We're gonna add a teaspoon of dried parsley. These, um, the pita chips will keep also. Um, once they're fully cooled, you can put them in an airtight container and they'll stay fresh for a couple of days. Um, you just wanna make sure they're fully cooled off. Otherwise you might get some steam in the, in the package and that'll make them go bad. We're gonna add a half a teaspoon of dried oregano and also half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Getting low on oregano. Okay. If you're using um, the finer grain like table salt, cut the amount in half because the crystals and kosher salt are bigger. So they, um, a finer grain will take, there'll be like twice as much in there um, versus the larger chunks. Um, and feel free, if you guys have any questions, don't be shy, you can hop in, you can type them in, you can speak up. I'm always happy to answer. Uh, and then a quarter teaspoon of ground paprika. You could use smoked paprika if you wanted to. I think that would be really nice in here. Um, it's just not the one that people tend to have, but smoked paprika is a really nice spice. And then just a couple turns of black pepper. If you're cooking along, just take a look and see if your chicken water is boiling yet. Mine is not, but it's getting there. Okay, so I'm gonna whisk this together with a whisk that I did not take out. <laughs> All right, so just kind of mixing this together. And if you're doing um, twice the amount of pitas for two batches, you can mix the full amount in here and just dress half of them first, wait to toss the other half in the oil until right before you cook them so that they don't get like absorbed too much. But I'm just gonna separate these layers of the pita right into here. So that's just where the pocket is if you were having it like a pocket style pita. So this way they're nice and thin, they get really crispy. I actually like kind of when they get really golden, almost, almost burnt. Um, if your oven tends to cook really fast, you might wanna check on them a minute or two earlier than, um, let's see, what do I put on there? Um, about eight minutes. So you might want to check them at six and just see um, if they're starting to get too brown. Um, and if you have like one section of your baking sheet is turning more brown than the other, you can take it out, flip it around and put it back in. And that way the your oven probably has a hot spot. And that way the extra hot place will be on the other side. So it'll help it cook a little more evenly. And the best way to toss these is just with your hands. It's kind of therapeutic, <laughs> but um, just toss them around. You can use tongs if you want. And you also don't have to cut these into precious little triangles. You can tear it apart, make it like rustic, whatever shapes you want to do. I am really curious to see how these whole wheat ones will do though. Cause I typically, I, I don't care too much for whole wheat pita bread um, when it's raw. I don't, not raw. It's cooked, but it's not like toasted. But um, I feel like it'll be good for pita chips. So you can see I've kind of got an even-ish coating 
on everything. And I'm just gonna spread these out on the baking sheet. So you can kind of dump them. And if there's any extra spices hanging out in here, just kind of scoop them out onto there. Your pants will be very slippery, but spread it out in as even of a layer. Like they can overlap a little bit, but try not to have them overlap too, too much. You can do similar with them to make tortilla chips also. I don't know, did we do that? Did we do guacamole and homemade tortilla chips for one of these class or epi no, classes? Not yet. Not oh, yet. well, there we go. That's a, uh, it's, it's amazing. Like you think that tortilla chips have to be so difficult to make or pita chips, but really like they're almost as good as frying them and you can bake them with just a little oil. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Better than frying. Ooh, sorry about that. My water is boiling, so I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer. So usually like medium low or low. And we'll check the chicken and chicken pieces are kind of big. So I'm gonna check them in about 10 minutes. So Alexa, set a chicken timer for 10 minutes. Sorry if I made yours go off and you're not cooking along. Um, the blessing and the curse of technology, like multiple timers is so much, it's such a time saver. And like, I just, I love doing that, um, especially on like multi-course meals and you can name the timers and comes in very handy. So once your oven's preheated, mine is almost, once it's preheated, the chip, the pita chips are gonna go in for eight minutes. And again, you're looking for them to be golden brown and crispy. They can even be like kind of dark brown, but check on them if you're concerned that they might go a little over. Um, so does anybody have a preference on if we do the hummus next or we cut the things that go in the chicken salad next? Anybody? I'll see if chicken anybody salad. has. Say what now? Chicken salad. Chicken salad, you got it. Okay. So these are going to go in for eight minutes. Alexa, set a pita timer for eight minutes. Eight minutes. Thank you. Okay, so our chicken salad, and I don't think I grabbed a big enough bowl for that. Chicken salad is my favorite. You can serve it in um, in pita pockets. It's really nice in like mini pita pockets if you want. Um, you can also, I have just like regular sandwich rolls, like little sesame seed ones um, that we serve it in. And it's also great in like a lettuce cup. If you have butter lettuce or romaine hearts, you can just kind of like fill it with that. And this is gonna sound super weird, but if you'll trust me for a moment, on a roll with um, kettle potato chips, so good. Like the extra salt and the crunch, it's like, it's ridiculous. I made it for um, 4th of July a couple years ago and brought to the fireworks with one of my friends and she's not stopped talking about it like ever since, so pretty proud of that. So the other ingredients for the chicken salad, it's very, very minor, only a few things, but the fresh herbs really add a lot of flavor. So we need um, a cup of mayo, I'll put that in here. Ooh. That mayo was very anxious to get out of the container. <laughs> but yeah, you can scoop this up right with your the pita chips if you want. They might, they might break a little bit, but um, it's, it's a really, I hope you like it. I, I really like it. My son really likes it. He's nine. I don't love the squeeze bottle mayo but we'll get to in a few. I really like, if you can find squeeze bottle tahini, it comes in so handy. Just want a cup of mayo. Go rogue and unscrew here. We can put all the other ingredients right in a big bowl. And then once the chicken is cooked and cooled, We'll chop it up and add it into there. 
does anybody else have towels hanging on like every every handle in their kitchen because I have like my mini dishwasher right here I've got one hanging here I've got on the freezer two on the stove it's like whenever my husband does laundry which is awesome that he does but I'm like the towels are never replaced and I go to wipe my hands and I'm like don't know what to do <laughs> all right so we got a cup of mayo I haven't tried doing this one with Greek yogurt. A lot of recipes, you can substitute Greek yogurt for mayo, but I, I haven't tried it with this yet. So I don't know if it works. It may, um, I might have to try it out just for like scientific purposes. <laughs> um, we're gonna do a third of a cup of thinly sliced red onion. If red onion tends to be a little um, strong for you, you can soak the slices in cold water first for like 10 minutes and then drain the water out. It'll help mellow. Um, this is just, I have a partial red onion left that I had in my fridge in this, this is a stasher bag. If you're not familiar, these are like one of my favorites. It's a reusable Ziploc basically. Um, you can microwave in them and everything. But so I, you could soak it. You could use, um, you could use a shallot because shallots are kind of like red onions, but they're a little milder. You could use a yellow sweet onion if you want. My family happens to really enjoy raw onions, luckily and unluckily, I guess, but if you're all eating it, everybody's breath is the same. So we want about a third of a cup. Let's see, do I want to actually measure this? I usually eyeball this, but we'll, we'll get the measuring cup. Just to kind of see. I don't know if anybody else's kitchen already is smelling really good but we've got the pita chip seasoning and the seasoning from the um the chicken the adobo seasoning it smells awesome in here already all right so i cut a little extra i'm gonna do a third of a cup of red onions and then um a half a cup of chopped cornichons which are these little like french pickles um this is my favorite brand of them. I've tried, there was a brand that I tried at the deli section and I, I didn't like the flavor as much. I'm not sure why, but these, they have this little, I call it the pickle lifter. It's got a little like hook and it just like hangs out on the edge so you can get your like drained pickles and you don't have to fish around. Um, even though, I don't know, fishing for pickles is kind of fun, but you can also, you can use the brine from pickles for dressings and stuff. Um, there's also, there's, if you like, the flavor of like a Shake Shack chicken sandwich. There's a copycat Chick-fil-A recipe on um, Damn Delicious's website and you brine, you marinate your chicken in pickle brine and milk and that, that like dill pickle brine is what gives it like a really interesting tang um, and it keeps it really nice and juicy. It's like a random tidbit if you ever find yourself wanting to do something with your leftover um, leftover pickle brine. So I'm gonna cut these in half and then just kind of chop them up and I want about half a cup of the pickles. Pieces, the size doesn't really matter. I just try to get them all kind of consistent. So you're not like getting like a giant chunk of pickle in one bite and not in another, but I just do these kind of like little pieces. I haven't tried this with regular dill pickles. There's something about the flavor of these that just works really well with this, this recipe. Um, does anybody like have anything that they usually bring when they go to the beach for like a meal? Is the Cornichon brand? Uh, yes, it's, I don't know how to, is it, do you pronounce the L's in French? Cause I know if it was Spanish, it'd be Maye, but yeah, I use, the M-A-I-L-L-E -L -L -E brand. That's just, I just prefer it. I mean, there are plenty of other brands too. These are also, I like to use these um, as garnishes on deviled eggs. I'll slice them in half like this and just nestle one on top of the yolk. It's really, really good. I don't know that I've tried Roland though. That's a good, um, I'll have to maybe look for that just to see. I can't remember what the brand was that I found they were out of this one at stop and shop one time and I was like oh I'm sure you know like dill pickles are all still a dill pickle it's usually still great but 
I wasn't so into it. Um, our, we just had a beach vacation and our like go-to thing. I don't, I think it started because my husband's grandparents used to make egg salad sandwiches when they would go to the beach. So we make egg salad and we use malt vinegar in it. Um, and we eat them, we call them egg salad tacos. So we'll bring just like a bunch of pieces of bread um, and we'll hold it, put the egg salad filling in the middle and just fold it up because it's like a little cleaner to eat it in taco form versus as a sandwich on the beach. Alexa, stop. All right, so let's see how these pitas are looking. I'm gonna say, this look pretty good. So, it's on the under camera. You can see like some really darker places and some lighter places, but just shaking them around even, I can feel that they're pretty crispy and they'll get crispier as they sit. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave them to sit, to cool on the side, and turn off the oven. I don't know about all of you, but my air conditioning does not really reach to my kitchen very well. So try to minimize the stove cooking and oven cooking in the summer when I can. Yeah, we do egg salad, um, lots of fresh fruit. Like, I feel like you kind of have to have watermelon when you're at a beach. Oh, look at that. Your chicken timer is done. Alexa, stop. So I'm not sure that this chicken is actually gonna be cooked through yet. Um, you're looking, when you cut into it, you want it to be, not to be pink and the juices to run clear, but really to know for sure if you have an instant read thermometer. Um, you can put that into a piece of chicken in the center. You want it to be 165. That way it'll be cooked all the way through. I'm going to take a piece out, put it on a board and cut into it and just take a peek. I'm thinking it's not going to be ready yet. But I could be wrong. So it's my giant piece of chicken. You can see some of the seasonings is actually did stick to it. And I'm just using a different board in case it's not cooked through. I don't want to get that stuff dirty. I will cut in here. Yeah, see we're still pink in the center there. So I'm just going to put it back in for another oh, five minutes or so. And I'm going to flip it over because a little bit of the top of my chicken kind of peeked out there. So Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. Okay, so I'm just rinsing this stuff off real quick. We'll come back to that. You definitely want to make sure your chicken is fully cooked. Um, okay. Let's see. The, the next class, that, um, the Appy Hour class we're doing, we're making buffalo chickpea dip and smoked salmon roll-ups, and those are two of, like, the favorite game day kind of appetizer recipes. They're both also good in lunch boxes if you like, um, if you pack your lunch and you can make them ahead of time. We've done a lot of fun ones in the past though. Um, I believe they're, most of them are available on the Rye Library's website or maybe their YouTube channel, I'm not sure. But I think you can find them if you're looking. But I always, I can always make a meal out of uh, appetizers so we also we did a cheese board class so well, all the all the videos are on our youtube channel and you can get to them by going to our homepage and clicking on our youtube link i'm stepping out now but tara's here ashley you're amazing as always thank you Catherine. see you soon good night yeah. everybody thanks for taking over tara <laughs> she's here she probably has her sound down but she'll mm -hmm. be so she is, she's will never know if it's actually comes together. <laughs> Suspense she'll tell me, she'll report. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Right, bye. Okay, so we've got our, chick, our mayo, red onion, cornichons. Um, we're gonna do a half a cup of, of lightly packed fresh dill, chopped. I, the dill that I got, like, look how sad this package was. They didn't have, um, they didn't have like bunches. So I have this little itty bitty thing. I don't think this is gonna be quite enough. And the fresh dill is really what makes this like one of the things that makes it really nice. So I'm gonna supplement, I'm gonna use this. They sell, 
this um it's a freeze-dried dill they have a bunch of different herbs but i you get this right in the produce department usually buy the fresh herbs and you keep it in the refrigerator but like this dill i mean it's really bright like as opposed to i'll show you like my actual dried dill I have them on my wall over here it's like a little more I mean, it's still green but it's a little more like dull looking um i find this stuff is a great substitute for fresh dill if you ever need it and you don't have enough so i'm just rinsing that out and i'll i'll keep the the small stems but these big this big stem at the bottom i'll cut that out and i'll if you compost just pop it in your compost otherwise um garbage um just because it'll be a little tough so, and there's something about fresh herbs, especially in the summertime, it's just such a nice addition. I feel like I have um, an egg salad recipe that's kind of like French inspired and it's got um, fresh tarragon in it. And that's really kind of a nice change from the normal or from the beach ones with the malt vinegar. So yeah, I've got like maybe half the amount of dill I want. So I'm just gonna supplement that with this. Maybe not quite quite the full amount. Maybe like that. Generally speaking, dried herbs have um, the con the flavors concentrated. So if you're substituting, you want to use less of a dried herb than a fresh herb. But this, I feel like, is fairly close. Okay. And then the last thing we're adding here is a quarter cup of sliced green onion. That's usually about two large ones or three small ones. So I don't know if you've ever. I kind of like the size of green onions varies wildly. So these ones I got from Trader Joe's, they're kind of smallish. So I'm gonna guess three. And I use the white and the green parts. I wanna try, I don't know if any of you have air fryers, but I've seen that you can air fry um, green onions and they get nice and like the greens get nice and crispy. I know they're good grilled, um, but I've never tried air frying them. So I'm curious to try that. I think if you do that, you need to put, separate the greens and the whites and pull the greens out first so they don't burn. But I feel like that'll be a, it would be a fun addition to different dishes. There's a ton that you can do with an air fryer. Um, mine's got like a dehydrate function. Got lots of stuff. Alexa, stop. All right, well, that was good timing. So we've got all the other ingredients are in here. We're just gonna check on the chicken to see if it's actually cooked through. I'm gonna grab the other piece. Normally I would grab whatever's the biggest piece of chicken and check that one to see if it's cooked through. Um, these two are pretty comparable in size. So let's see what we got going on here. Yes, that looks cooked through, but you can also, if you ever just want to be sure, um, you want to go into the center of the thickest part of your piece of meat. So you just push this right down in. I'm going to, I'm glad I took the temperature. It's like 158, 159. So I'm going to put it in for just a couple more minutes. I figure, especially with poultry, it's better to be safe. So um, there's also thermometers you can use for the grill that um, they have two probes, they're called dual probe thermometers. And you can, so when we do like a whole chicken on the grill, you can stick one or even in the oven, one probe in the dark meat and one in the white meat. And you can kind of monitor the two different um, zones to make sure they're both cooking. So I'm just going to tidy this up a little. Does anybody have any questions or it doesn't have to be about these particular recipes, but really anything. I'm always happy to, to chat food things with people. Ashley, I have a question about yes. the, the oven. Yes. Um, I am pretty energy efficient. So I always use the, the toaster oven mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they have up to 400 something degrees. You know, it's a smaller one and I don't yep. cook, you know, crazy. So well, how do you compare a toaster oven and a toaster oven and a conventional one? Can I continue to use the toaster one? 
Um, I've never actually owned a toaster oven, but um, my oven, I don't know if you noticed, I have this top oven, it's like a half size, and then there's a full oven underneath it. So I like, I use this to be energy efficient, that little area kind of preheats faster than, than the full size oven. But in a toaster oven, I'm pretty sure you just have to scale things down. So like if you were doing the pita chips, you would want to use, um, instead of that big pan, you would probably use like a quarter sheet pan and do half the amount of pita and you could do that. Um, so you just, I think a lot of times it's just like quantity, but I think a small, a small oven that's energy efficient is great. I feel like maybe it wouldn't be good for roasting, but I feel like they're getting so um, advanced now that some of them have like roasting functions, air frying functions and all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, so you're saying that effectiveness I yeah, mean, I'm I, talking about a small size. It, it's, it's not too much difference, conventional and yeah, close to the effectiveness. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, I, but I, again, I haven't actually owned one. If so. I can interject here. Yeah, please. I would think that in the toaster, it uh, cooks much more quickly. Okay. Okay, I've taken notice that when I use a, a toaster oven, it uh, it cooks in less time than if I use larger size. Okay, and are you yeah. talking about when you're cooking it with a set temperature or just when you're toasting something? With a set temperature. Okay, that's really good to know. Okay, I guess Can, maybe, yeah. And I think it's because the, uh, the, uh, the volume of the oven itself, since it's much smaller, mm -hmm. Things heat up much more quickly and heat before concentrated. That makes sense. Um, and I know oven ovens tend to be inaccurate. Um, like when you're baking bread, it's recommended to preheat it, the oven or pizza for like an hour to really make sure it's at that temperature. And you, you can get one of those little hanging oven thermometers to see when your oven's preheated alarm goes off take a look at it and see if the temperature says the temperature that you set it to because often it, it doesn't it takes a little while longer so yeah probably then you're losing the heat when you open up the oven so a smaller oven I feel like can regain that quicker so you're you're probably right on with that um I'm gonna dump the hot water out into the sink from the chicken and I'm gonna cover it with cold water and let it sit so it can cool off while we make the hummus um so before we chop it this off to the side. Little counter space here, but okay. So I'm just replacing the hot water with cold water. Sometimes I'll like rinse it off a time or two just to really like get the cold, cold water in there. And then I'll just let it set while we're making the other stuff. So you can do it, you can take it out and set it on a cutting board and let it cool off that way. I just found the cold water kind of helps feeds it along a little bit and there's no harm in mixing it in while it's still a little um, warm and then working with it like that it'll taste better if it sits a little longer though all right so while that's sitting we're gonna make hummus how are we doing on time not bad okay so if you have a food processor um, that's my favorite way to make hummus you can do it in a blender you can use dried chickpeas. I just don't tend to because um, I you have to think ahead, plan ahead a lot more for those. Um, but canned chickpeas are easy. You can save the liquid. We're going to drain it out today, but you can save it. Um, it's called aquafaba and you can use it. You can whip it just like egg whites. It's a vegan egg replacer in a lot of recipes. Um, there's a lot of things that you think that you would need to throw out that you really don't. And there's a lot of fun alternate uses for things. So I'm just gonna do one clove of garlic and just peel it. Uh, if you have a food processor, I'll show you a fun trick for mincing. Oh wow, that popped it right down. Okay, so this was just a little piece of silicone that you push and it lets the peel fall off really easily. So if you have a food processor, and especially, this is great if you have a bunch of cloves of garlic that you need to mince. Let's see, I'm gonna unplug one thing over here. To mince the garlic really nice and evenly, 
you turn the motor on and you drop the garlic in before anything else is in your food processor bowl and it, the blades spin around and mince the garlic really nicely. Just kind of let it go. That way, if you put it in when you put the other ingredients in, um, it'll tend to have like a lot of bigger chunks. So I don't know if you can see, it's like all these little flecks. It just kind of minced it up really nicely. I don't mind a big chunk of garlic now and then, but not ideal for most people. So we're gonna drain our chickpeas, just a regular size can, usually like 15 and a half ounces. Aquafaba is great for vegan desserts as well. Yeah, I've heard, um, I have a friend who uses it to make those like meringue cookies even. Um, I haven't experimented with it too much, but, but I should, cause it's, I do like finding ways to not waste things. And it's always nice if you have a friend or a loved one who's vegan, or you just want to try to eat more plant-based things. It's always nice to have options. So I'm just going to rinse this off and you'll notice it kind of gets a little like sudsy at first. You just rinse it until that kind of subsides. And that gets any extra like sodium and starchiness off of there. Um, the super, super, super smooth hummus. One of the ways you get that is you take the chickpeas, you put them on like a kitchen towel and you rub them a little bit to get the little like, those like papery skins off. It takes a lot of patience to do that. You can buy dried ones that have had the skin taken off already, which is um, if you want to work with dried chickpeas. But I think that it gets plenty smooth just doing it like this. If I was trying to do something like super, super gourmet, maybe I would take a little more time with it. But this is actually like a really, it's a quick way to get hummus that tastes just as good as the stuff that you can buy at the store. Um, we're gonna add a quarter cup of fresh lemon juice. It's usually about one or two lemons. And if you need to try to, if they feel a little like not quite squeezy, you can just roll them around on your cutting board a little bit. And I've shared this tip before, but in case any of you have not heard me get excited about this one, um, if you have one of these types of citrus juicers, I used to think that you're supposed to put the lemon in this way because it matches the curve of the thing and then you squeeze it, but you actually put it in this way. This presses it down um, and you get much, much more juice out of it. So we're going for a quarter cup, squeezing it right over my measuring container. And so you get like all the juice out that way. Um, I saw somebody do it a couple years ago and I was like, what are they doing? They're squeezing that upside down. And then I saw it come out, I was like, oh, okay. That actually gets all of the bits out of there. That's awesome. So that gave me, eh, about half of what I need. So I think I'm gonna need almost two full lemons for mine. Okay. Gonna add that right in. And we're gonna add two tablespoons of olive oil. For this, since we're not like cooking with it or anything, if you wanna use like a nice olive oil or an extra virgin olive oil, that is good. And then I, I like to, when I serve this, I'll put like a, a topper oil on top at the end just to make it look kind of pretty. Completely optional, just kind of nice sometimes. And then we're gonna add um, a half a teaspoon of kosher salt and a half a teaspoon of cumin. So these are really simple seasonings, but um, you could totally add stuff like adobo sauce, like chipotle and adobo. If you wanted to give some like other types of flavors in there, you could put some pesto in there if you wanted to go kind of Italian with it. I know that they sell chocolate hummus. I'm not sold on it. I, I haven't tried it. I'm not quite sure how I feel about that one, but I would try it. Um, 
and two tablespoons of water. Here, just to thin it out a little bit. You can always thin it out more if you need to. And then we're gonna add the tahini. So tahini, it's the thing that makes it taste like hummus. It's a sesame paste. And a lot of times it comes in a jar like peanut butter. Um, you'll have to stir it. A lot of times the oil kind of separates. If you're able to find a squeeze bottle, this is just one brand that makes it Mighty Sesame Company. It's so much easier. You can just squeeze it right into the measuring cup. Um, we're using a quarter cup of that. I find it a lot easier to work with um, than scooping up and dripping oil everywhere. And I find like those cans, and they you have to store them in the refrigerator after you open them. This you do too, but it's still really, like it just pours out really nicely. The cans I found, they always would get really gross on the outside. So just doing a quarter cup of this. You could totally actually drizzle some of this on at the end too, if you wanted, like, this just gives it that like really velvety sesame texture and flavor. All right, is that everything? I think that's everything. So we're just gonna puree it. Um, the longer you puree it, the smoother it'll be. Some people don't mind a little bit of texture in there. Some people want it super, super smooth. So I'm just going to turn it on, let it go for a few, and then we'll scrape down the sides with a spatula. Sorry, it's probably very loud. So I'm gonna pause it. You can see it's already pretty smooth like that, but there's still definitely some chunks. I'm just gonna scrape the sides a little, and let it go again. If you do this in a blender, especially like a Vitamix, you can get it really, really super um, velvety. So if you're looking at it, and I'm thinking today, this looks like it might need just like a little bit more oil because um, it's looking a little chunky still. I'm gonna put drizzle a little bit more oil into it. Like I said, you can always add more. You can also slowly drizzle it in through the chute if you wanted to like really look at what it's doing while it's going. I'm gonna just put that in a bowl. Bowl that picked up some of my dried parsley. Okay, I'll put that in here. My um, one of my favorite parts of this is the retractable cord because I don't know if you guys have a lot of appliances in your kitchen, but this one you can just like scooch it back up into the base and it makes storing it a lot easier or less, I guess, less cluttery. So I'm gonna take the blade out of here. Scoop it on in. My son loves, loves, loves this hummus. And you can also, if you don't wanna use it as a dip, you can also use it to spread on sandwiches or wraps. And then when I'm serving it, a lot of times I'll just kind of like, make some some shapes in it with either a spatula or a fork just to give it like different heights and stuff. And then we'll, um, I drizzle a little topper oil on top and it kind of collects in the different shapes in the pools. So a little oil and then either some paprika or if you have um, sumac, it's, it's used in a lot of um, Persian cooking. Uh, just sprinkle that right on top. And that's all there is to the hummus and chips portion. You can see the pita chips, nice and crispy. I feel so bad, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some off of here. I feel like bad demolishing this pretty bowl right away, but it's nice and crispy, but it still has like a good amount of texture because it's a little thicker than a tortilla. So that is that portion. Then all we have to do is cut up our chicken for the chicken salad. 
um, for, I know I mentioned that we could um, talk about things to accompany this on, like if you're packing it up for the beach picnic or whatever. Um, I'm, I really like a lot of fresh vegetables as options. Fruit's always nice. Um, you could add, have some dried fruit if you wanted. There's some really great things at like Trader Joe's. Um, there, I was, I was questionable the first time I saw a can of stuffed grape leaves. They're very, very good. Um, they have, these ones are vegan. They also have ones, I think they have meat in them. So just when you're buying stuffed grape leaves, that's something to look out for. I haven't tried this one yet, but this is a Grecian style eggplant with tomatoes and onions that I bet would be really nice. Um, there's all sorts of like tapenades and stuff you can get. I've got some artichoke hearts. Um, these ones are just quartered, but there are ones that are marinated that have nice spices in them, roasted peppers, anything from the olive bar really would be nice. Um, so I'm just gonna cut the chicken into like half inch ish pieces. And if you get any like tough bits, fatty bits, you can just peel them off. Discard those. My chicken pieces are falling apart since I uh, cut into them already, but I have never tried this one with shredded chicken, but I've seen that if you have a KitchenAid mixer, and you put cooked, I don't know if this only works for rotisserie chicken, but you put cooked chicken in there with a the paddle attachment and you let it run and it shreds it up perfectly. I have not tried it, I can't vouch for it, but I know plenty of people who have and are like blown away with how well it works. So I'm just cutting this and then kind of as I cut sections, I'll scoop it into that bowl. Um, this is like probably my favorite kitchen tool. It's a bench scraper, but it's got sides. So if you scoop things in and you go to carry them over, they won't fall off the edge. So uh, I use it very often. Do you guys have any, if anybody wants to chime in with your favorite or most used kitchen tool or appliance? I'm always, it's always things that you don't expect to be such big hits, I find. Um, shy it's okay I clearly can I'm fine with continuing to talk but I definitely feel free to jump in I love people that want to um, participate too yeah I know one thing I love um from pampered chef we got one of the this tool that takes the corn off the cob oh and it is so much fun because we'll eat that corn but then this way if it's left over or we don't get to it yeah, we can peel it off so it heats up better, or we can freeze it, and we actually use it all the time. That's My awesome. My husband thought it was silly, and then he's the one that uses it. So that's that awesome. one is useful. <laughs> I, you know, and my my son's got braces right now. He got braces last September, so I have to cut the corn off the cobs for him um, for now. Otherwise, it would be very difficult for him to eat. Um, that's good to know. I just do the cut it off with a knife method, um, which you know can be a little messy. So that's. That's good to know. I have, um, I used to have a Pampered Chef pizza stone that was really nice. And then um, somebody who lives here that I'm married to, who I'm not gonna name, broke it. <laughs> he broke it when he was transferring it. And then we ended up getting a pizza steel instead of a ceramic one. Cause like you can't break it. It's a really heavy piece of steel. Does anybody else have any kitchen tools that they surprisingly love? So if we're talking about corn on the cob. Yes, I, I'm you, from Indiana originally, so I could talk about corn like all day. <laughs> so if you take a bunt pan, right? Yep. So it's right side up and you put the cob and it's sticking in the center and you take a knife and you just slide down the cob, mm -hmm. the corn falls right into the bunt pan and then you can pour it in one place. So it's not going all over your counter. I always thought that was fun. Uh, yeah, I've done, I've, I've used that trick before too. That's a good one because it, pretty much minimizes how much of it flies all over your kitchen. Exactly. I saw somebody recently had said that they just, they set it down instead of upright, they set it down flat on their cutting board and Whoa. just cut off. And I've tried it and it does work. However, like <laughs> whoever was saying about the zipper, the zipping kind of remover, you don't really get quite all of the corn off, I feel like. Yeah. But you can save your cobs. Um, 
and really many veggie scraps, you can save them in a bag in the freezer and use them to make stock if you're interested in that. So here's my bowl, all the mayo, herbs, onions, chicken. Just mix it up and then taste it and see, cause the sea, we had seasoned salt or adobo or whatever you used in yours to cook and there's salt from the pickles. It probably won't need any additional seasoning, but it might. Oh, look at that, I left a big piece of chicken. Um, so you might wanna add a little bit more. And like I said, this is great. Like you could, you could do a board if you wanted to. Um, and it doesn't have to be like a board board, especially if you're taking this on a picnic, you could just use like a cookie sheet, bring this with you in your, when you're packing your stuff up, bring the things in Tupperwares and like set them out on the boards and just like scatter the veggies and stuff around. I think that would work really nicely. So this is all there is to chicken salad. It doesn't maybe look like much, but it is so, so fragrant. Um, I love the flavor of it. And I'll show you my ridiculous um, sandwich. This is how I usually eat them. But they are really good in lettuce too, but um, I'll take a bun. Get my a lot of carbs, but you need the energy if you're swimming and stuff. So these ones are already split, which is nice. Not all sandwich rolls are. And I, I prefer, you, you do however you like. I prefer like a softer sandwich roll for these instead of like a Kaiser roll. They would be, they would be great on little slider rolls too, actually, with like, you could put another one of those little cornichons on top if you put like a little skewer through it, you know? So I pile this up. And then I open a bag of kettle chips, just like regular salt. Like I haven't done any crazy flavors. It's like, you know, some people, myself included, put um, coleslaw on top of their pulled pork. I feel like if you do that, you're likely to try this. So that's how my whole family eats them like that. So you get that like crunchy bit and the nice creamy chicken salad. It's a little messy. So, um, you know, you could do a, a chicken salad taco. Like where I was talking at the beach where you just have a piece of sandwich bread and kind of fold it up. But, um, oh my gosh, it's like an three minutes drive an hour. We like killed it on the timing today. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Like I had like different veggies and stuff that I would dip. Whole bell peppers are good for hummus. You can just um, cut them in half or into strip. Full bell peppers, I would do strips. These little baby ones, I would just snip the top, clip the top off and then slice down the center. You can use that to scoop up hummus. And this bag, I think I got a freak bag, but there's no seeds in any of them. So you can just use that to scoop up the hummus, but I think just like a, an assortment of crunchy things is always nice with a smooth dip like hummus. So um, cucumbers, and when you're doing a, like a tray or something, the kind of fun thing is um, cutting things in different shapes. So you can do coins, you could do chips, you could do um, like stalks, uh, whatever shape variation. Um, just to make things look interesting. Radishes are always nice if you like something a little peppery. And if they're too, um, if, if radishes tend to be spicy for you, try a lighter colored one, especially at the farmer's market, they'll have like pink ones or white ones, those purple ones, they tend to be a little bit milder. So that's a tip there. And if anybody has any questions, um, that's all I have for this class. We'll be, like I said, I'll be back on September 21st and I have a kids class coming up on August 11th with the Greenberg Library. If any of you have kids who are interested in doing a class, we're making, um, actually it's like a family cooking class, uh, skillet lasagna and garlic bread. It's a really good one. Thank yep. you so much, Faith. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thanks. It was awesome. Thank you. I wish I could share this with you all, but you'll have to let me know what you think if you try it. <laughs> Thank you to trying it. Thanks. So yeah. Good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.